Hello, Goranges are on view yet again, this time for our sale on the 24th of January. Sales motor on as ever. So what have we got for you this time? Interesting lots of as ever, but I thought this week, let's have a little look in what Roger's dug out in the jewellery department and silver. So I've picked out a few little things to uh, show you. We'll start with, let's start with silver, because we sell the silver first. A um, few little curiosities here. How about an egg cruet? You know, we've all seen cruet stands for uh, our condiments, but this is an egg cruet. So you've got your egg cups, um, which are detachable, of course, so that you can have your boiled egg or what have you. Uh, date wise, 1895 is the date. And then in around the centre here, you have these little slots and these are for you to stand your egg spoons in. Now, typically, these are not the original spoons. In fact, even that shape is if you see, they, they, they did at some points make spoons purely for eating eggs and uh, they have a slightly different shape to a standard teaspoon. Anyway, this comes with a set of Old English shell pattern spoons, which tie in to the shell motif or Athenian motif on the egg cruet, but they're not the, they're not the original ones. They are associated is what we say. Anyway, modest estimate of that. That's lot 817 from 1895. Eat your boiled eggs for 120 to 180, we say. Then what else have we got? How about a Vesta case for putting your matches in? So Vesta cases, uh, the early matches or Vestas were somewhat flammable things incl inclined to uh, catch fire in your pocket. Uh, so Vesta cases were created um, to put them in so that if they did combust, you, you wouldn't set your trousers on fire or worse. And they're typically just like this, this sort of shape, very often with this sort of foliate scroll engraving. This one is dated 1894, one year before the egg cruet. But what's unusual, we've got a locket lid for a little compartment for photographs or miniatures that just makes it a bit different. Uh, hallmarked inside there. As ever, I mean, as soon as something's not standard, it's worth a little bit more, more of a collector's item. That's lot 802, estimate 100 to 150. We'll put that one away. Where did I get it from over there? Put that one away. And then your last bit of silver that I'm going to show you, though there's other silver in the sale. Lot 819, this is a lot earlier. This is round about 1790. And it's Irish silver, which is rather nice, from Dublin. Hallmarked with maker and, uh, and the Dublin mark, but not a date letter, but it's 1790, 1800, that sort of date. And I guess it's a slice for serving whatever you want to serve. Dessert, kippers, I don't know. It has an engraving on it. It has a crest. I'll show you the right way up. It has a crest and motto that looks later. That looks to be sort of late Victorian or thereabouts. It also has what looks to be a marine, I would say, ivory handle. Um, so potentially there are issues with having that in due course because it comprises more than 10% of the article. Um, and perhaps that reflects the modest estimate of 80 to 120. Perhaps it's worth a little more, perhaps it's not. We shall see on the day as always. So other silver in the cabinet to look at. Let's have a look at some jewellery. And uh, well, let's start with three rings here. It's like a sort of film name or something. I don't know. Three rings. Here we are. Three sapphire and diamond cluster rings all of different uh, styles and appeals. So we start with lot 892 because it's the lowest lot number. This one is uh, gold, yellow gold, looks to be 18 carat. Um, it's got some sort of, yes, it is hallmarked inside. So Roger will have put all the details online. And that's your classic oval sapphire and diamond cluster with quite a nice dark sapphire in the center and some very respectable diamonds around the outside. Estimate on that one, six to 800 pounds. Might make a bit more. Why not? Who knows? We'll see. Compare it to lot 894. There we go. This one has much more of a sort of, I suppose, sort of art deco feel to it um, with that rectangular cluster within a double row. It's in platinum or white gold. Again, we may well have said that on the description if we've been able to ascertain it. And um, a slightly different colour to the sapphire. It's got a sort of hint of greenness to it, I would say. Um, that one has an estimate of four to six hundred, eight ninety four. And finally, for your comparison, eight ninety seven, which is just more delicate in scale. Again, it's um, white gold. This one, I believe, uh, pretty blue colour. Again, diamonds around the outside. Uh, if we slide the, th and that's an estimate of five to seven hundred, which sort of uh, you, you pays your money, you take your chances, see what happens on the day, how they how they balance out against each other. All sapphires probably all heat treated most colored gemstones are so one would only call, call it a fully natural sapphire if one had a certificate to say it hadn't been treated 
Um, but, you know, they're not synthetics or anything like that. They're just heat treated natural stones. Slightly varying ages, varying qualities. We shall see what happens with those. While we're rummaging in the jewellery cabinet, two other things caught my eye. You might like them, you might not. Lot number 883. This sort of squashed serpent brooch. It's, um, it is gold and although it's unmarked, um, we've got a pin here, not particularly well attached. It looks like someone sat on it, but just got a rather nice look to it. Um, that's 883 and at two to 300 pounds. And if you fancy something a little more showy, these probably antique, I would say, um, more or less rose cut diamond earrings. They're brilliant cuts in the center. Look, the sort of the circular stone is, um, is more evenly faceted. And then the outer stones are more crudely sort of chipped away at. So that's called a rose cut. So a pair of, of antique gold and silver mounted diamond drop earrings, flower head cluster. Those are in at six to 800 pounds. So, and they are lot number 875. So there we go, selection of jewelry for you. Uh, quick look at the smalls. I thought we might go and look at the furniture. Quick look at the smalls. Lot 252, how about that? They caught Mrs. Lansbury's eye. She likes posh things like Hermes. <laughs> and uh, you could have your breakfast tea out of it. Um, not quite sure what that label's all about, but there we are, beautiful, nice um, sort of lotus leaf pattern to it with some boxes. Um, you could have your tea and you can have your sugar, but if you take milk, bad luck, you're not gonna get it because there's no jug there. Lot 252. Otherwise, I drift past some um, Sultan dessert wine and some vintage port and some Staffordshire dogs, some glasses to drink your wine from. Are they signed? Yes, they are. Waterford, set of nine of those, lot 260. Uh, there's a few clocks scattered about. Uh, some nice paintings in the cell, a number from sort of France from 1950s, 60s. It's lot 621, it's signed Dulac. Uh, a little oil on canvas there, still light. Um, otherwise, there are some nice little Mediterraneans for harbour scenes and other things scattered throughout. So have a good look at the smalls. We'll go and go over the warehouse and hope we can find something good to show you in the furniture. So here we are in the warehouse and it's fabulously laid out by Max and Paul who always do it so very quietly not to interrupt videos which is great. And um, in amongst it, the lovely family, they are, of lead deer. A number of items have come from a little cottage uh, near Heathfield that we cleared just before Christmas. And uh, here's a complete Bambi and family. Um, some repair required, please note, and, and no doubt a skilled restorer could deal with that. Um, as, as the stag's horns are a little droopy and what have you, but they're, they're still rather fun, aren't they? Lot 123 there, from the same property, I think this lot, one, no, not from the same property, lot 124, classics of George III tripod table, but just got a bit more character to it, got a nice bit of grain in the, in the tripod there and what have you. Slightly low, perhaps, would be the only possible criticism. Lot 124, carrying on down the line as usual, garden furniture and Can't garden hear you. furniture and the like. Um, here, here's a classic. This is from that same lovely property near Heathfield. Classic George III bureau in oak with some mahogany banding. I mean, these aren't the easiest things to sell at the moment, as we all know, but this one's got a bit more to it. I like these starburst inlays. Um, mm. Yes, it's had alterations to the escutcheons and handles, but it's got a bit of character to the interior. That's lot seven. Not going to be a hugely expensive item. Also, alongside it, not from the same property, but this lot nine, uh, this uh, bit of 1920s oak here, uh, multiple drawers, so useful perhaps for filing or collectors or what have you. Carrying on further down, we've got some gate legs as ever, bow front chests, perspex occasional tables. This nice sort of Swiss painted bedside cupboard, lot 13. There we go, got a bit of character to it, that one. There's Edwardian chairs here. Uh, nice little French caned occasional chair, a bit of a hole in the caning note. You know, always got to ask, always ask for a condition report. People still buy from us and they're surprised when things aren't perfect. Now, auctions are one of the most imperfect places there are, as are the people that work in them, I should know. So um, always ask for a condition report. Come along and have a look. If you can't come and have a look, ask, because we'll have a look for you. And if we tell you it's perfect and you get it and you, the legs have fallen off, then we'll be responsible and have to give you your money back or put it right or what have you. So yes, always ask for condition reports. Uh, running down the line here, I may have admired that in the past, but someone else didn't. It's back in again, lot 102. I think that's quite a nice mule chest. Um, something Victorian, not the most fashionable again, lot 95 here. Victorian walnut work table with the original interior. 
had a nice feature, lot 95, sensible estimate of the line. And here, lot 106, look at this. This is a nice sort of arts and crafts piece, um, very much in the manner of Liberty or someone similar. I guess it's press covered. You've got a hanging rail, but you've also got these removable shelves that look to be original. Nice wrought iron um, furniture upon it. These little heart-shaped motifs here. A uh, little bit faded. It's been in a, in a garden house, I think. So it's, it's perhaps suffered a little, but essentially sound and solid and would take a nice colour with a bit of TLC. So that's lot 109. Uh, there's a nice big dresser there, like drift past. Look. I called that 109. That's 106, sorry. 106 is that Arts and Crafts piece. This is 109, nice big 1920s oak dresser. As ever, there's other things like this Edwardian compactum wardrobe. Lots of useful drawers and the like in it. We've got Edwardian display cabinets. We've got large tin bins uh, painted with pigs. <laughs> Should you need one of those, place to come. Not a bad looking mirror either. Look at that, that sort of Florentine type frame, carved gilt wood. It is lot number 78. And um, to finish off, over the back there, for something completely different, this 19, I suppose, 1960s teak um, side cabinet, lot 121. So hopefully, something for everyone. Um, I sat in the cell. It's not in the cell, don't look at that. Is it? No, that's been a gone. You can't oh. have it. It's always the way. You see it, you want it too late. If you're planning <laughs> on starting a pub with the fox and grapes, you've missed your chance. Well, you have to get your brushes out. Anyway, there we go. So thank you for your time watching this. Me dribble on as and, usual. And would you like to mention the book sale? There is a book sale coming up. I'd love to mention the book sale on the 25th. Tuesday 25th. Yes. Philip's been very busy putting his book sale together, so have a look at that as well. It's all online, you can see what it's all about. Uh, any queries, give us a shout. Thank you very much indeed.